again everybody uh, this is a uh, first update of the uh, Ravel uh, Triceratops from Dawn of Time that I've been working on uh, so far I've made uh, progress that I usually start off with and that's by uh, washing everything down scrubbing it up getting the mold off and uh, for prep work and uh, the next step was to actually I uh, sprayed some uh, uh, the automotive uh, spray adhesive uh, on the uh, parts themselves and then I went with the uh, finishing up on my Rust-Oleum uh, uh, gray uh, primer because uh, I didn't want to keep this whole model as, as a, a, in the uh, green mold so uh, without further ado uh, show you some of the details that the uh, primer has popped out with and We'll go ahead and start with the, uh, maybe with the head, work work our way down to the torso, uh, legs, and uh, tail, and uh, maybe the base itself, if we have some time. All right, so first off, uh, we'll go ahead with the actual face of uh, trike here. Um, hopefully I can get the light in here, and he's in focus with the camera and uh, so basically uh, uh, priming it up like this it really brings out the details in his face uh, from his eyes uh, all the way to uh, his uh, snout his teeth and uh, the horn that's coming out of his snout and then his uh, beak like appendage that comes out from the front of his face there uh, which was used for uh, plucking out uh, different types of vegetation like uh, ferns and things of that nature. So that's uh, one half of his face there and I think it came out looking pretty good. And uh, of course we got the second part of his face the other side and uh, as you can see uh, some good detail there. Sorry if the lights not too good in here. I'm working in the garage but uh, Hopefully you get the idea of the uh, details of the uh, of the face of uh, trike there. All right, and uh, <clears throat> of course the uh, other part of his head that will complete it. It's what scientists uh, refer to as the uh, frill. Let me see if I can bring this in a little bit closer for you. Uh, so this whole part here is the. Uh, is the frill and of course on the ends we have the pointy bone structure uh, which some of the scientists believe uh, could regulate uh, temperature or uh, as a defensive part of his armor and uh, some other scientists believe that over time when he matures uh, they actually produce holes in the frill uh, but you know that's up for debate but uh, there you go that's the uh, frill of uh, trike so one big massive uh, bone okay uh, also just for a little info this is actually six times the uh, density of a human skull so it's pretty thick all right uh, <clears throat> the other thing here is the uh, lower jaw of uh, trike uh, which actually gets hinged between the two halves of his face um, and uh, in reality uh, there are actually rows of teeth about 60 to 80 rows of teeth which they call barriers and of course with all the uh, chewing of the vegetation and uh, as everyday activity uh, you know the teeth will fall out and get replaced with new ones but uh, there you go that's uh, that's the lower half there with uh, nice detail on the lower half of his jaw and you'll see here's a portion of uh, the remainder of his beak uh, appendage uh, to complete it so that's his lower jaw All right. and then to uh, we'll set these off to the side here and of course to complete the head structure we have the horns uh, these are 
in reality, uh, when he was a mature adult, uh, these would grow up to at least uh, three feet in length. But uh, that's what it looks like all prime dirt up. Uh, I may have to do a little bit more of some seam work, but then again, some of the uh, seams could represent uh, uh, gashes in his horn, maybe when he's fighting with T-Rex. So who knows? Uh, we'll, we'll see how it looks once I dress it up a little bit. But uh, as uh, Trike would say, don't mess with the horns. So, there you go. That should complete his uh, head part itself. We get to the uh, torso, and uh, it came out pretty nice detail-wise once I put the primer on there. Uh, I do have to do a little bit more sanding and putting uh, on top, but uh, you can see how... Let me see if I can bring the light down a little bit more here for you. <laughs> But as you can see, there's the uh, detail on the upper half of his torso. Um, this is where the seam line uh, is right here. So I may have to sand a little bit just to kind of uh, smooth it out a little bit. Uh, not too concerned in between the uh, uh, areas as much. Uh, I could probably dress that up with some uh, variety of paint and stuff like that. Um, as far as the belly side, uh, this is the other part of the seam here. Uh, I may not be too concerned with that because it won't be shown since it's going to be sitting like this. And by the way, this is actually the front of him and this is the rear of him. The tail comes out this side here. Um, but like I said, with the uh, primer putting on there, it's nicely detailed all the way around. So uh, it should come out nice once I put some detail work in the, in the painting part. Uh, I do have everything masked off where the legs are going to go, so I have some, uh, you know, still have some good contact in case I want to glue it down in a fixed position or keep them, you know, where the legs are actually moving. I do have this part here uh, taped off. There's actually notches in here. Uh, if you recall, another part of this is that the head can actually move up and down this way, uh, so you can manipulate it. Uh, like I said, I still haven't decided whether I want a fixed position or not. And the same thing with the tail. Uh, once I put the tail on there, it can swivel down, up, sideways. So we'll see. But uh, like I said, that's the uh, torso part of uh, uh, the trice triceratops on there. Uh, we'll set this over here. <coughs> and next, of course, we have uh, different parts of his legs. Uh, they are nicely detailed, as you can see. So, really, really looks like realistic, uh, you know, skin. Um, so I'll have fun detailing that out with some paint. All right. And our next set of trees, I left these on the uh, on the sprue. Uh, this is easier for me to paint it, but. Uh, once again, uh, you can see the detail in the in the legs, and uh, this would be part of the diorama. Let me see. This would be part of the diorama right here, as well as this. This will actually fit into here, and then the rest will fit on the base itself. And there's a one little piece of vegetation that they give you. Uh, so there's that, and uh, on to the next one here. We have the larger legs that go on the back, a rear end of a uh, trike. Uh, once again, as you can see here, very nicely detailed. Okay. And uh, now here's one here. Uh, if you notice here, uh, this particular leg is going to go on the front of him. I'm not sure if it's on the right or left, but uh, there's one significant difference. On the front legs, the claws, uh, you notice that uh, this has four claws coming out of his foot here. And actually, it's come on a 90 degree angle. Some of the scientists believe that the two front legs kind of come out on a 90 degree angle like a, a lizard, uh, only because to support his uh, head structure, because his head structure uh, is relatively over a thousand pounds. And uh, so he's low center gra gravity, so uh, he'll have two uh, front legs 
protruding out sideways to support that weight as far as the back uh, legs are concerned they're more straight up and down so that's how they determined uh, how he supports his uh, weight as he's uh, going about his business so because the actual back legs only have three claws so three claws in back four four claws in front to support his weight of the head and last but not least we have our tail as you can see the primer really brought out the uh, the skin details um, on the tail itself uh, so that came out really nice um, so there you go that's uh, kind of where I'm at right now at this point uh, I'll start putting uh, some of this together uh, start gluing it up and uh, we'll see you soon so long.